and just bring that down. Lovely killer. Ooh, it's beautiful. It's running down. Hello everybody, welcome to Great Artist Deal. This is the third video of Hopper's palette. I'm gonna be focusing on Nighthawks. Um, amazing painting, obviously it's uh, incredibly uh, complex and um, obviously the amount of time it will take me to copy this painting um, will, be, it will be the ages. So what I've decided to do is to um, prepare, I've prepared the mixing already. And what I'll do, I'll do little bits of details around the painting. And then I'll do another video where I've actually show me uh, painting this and completing it with the palette I've got. Um, but my, the main thing is uh, what we're looking at is, the, is how he's used his palette. And um, over the last two um, videos, I've, I've looked at to the hotel and railroad uh, by the railroad and one where we looked at gas and both, um, both uh, videos, I think I start to explore how Hopper's used the two color mixing. Now, two color mixing is um, is obviously again explaining it. It's using a big palette. Uh, I've got the same palette up here, and it's very complex because it's a it's a logic that's really uh, difficult to get, um, and and nobody really knows the logic of it just yet. I mean, um, but if if you use it well, you can actually get some really amazing color shifts, and I think. Um, Hopper is showing amazing skills at using two color mixing. I've come across other artists who are very good at mix, using two color mixing, and one was Monet. And Van Gogh started to do it. Remember, Van Gogh's career lasted just ten years as a painter. He was only painting for two years using all those color, color, um, the, the color paintings, the bright color paintings we've seen already in Van Gogh's painting. But with Hopper, he had a really long career looking at two color mixing, and I think he really became a master of it. And this painting, I think, is a really uh, great example of it. And, uh, and what I've got here are the results I've come up with um, <clears throat> where you're looking at this painting and trying to see which combinations make sense. So you mix two combinations of colour, you can see what happens to the two colours when they go. And this, for instance, here, I've got... Uh, this is cadmium yellow and ultramarine blue. And I've mixed them across here. And what I get is these really, uh, really strong yellow-greens and the, the light catching the shutter over here. Or the blind over there, and uh, is the same colour as the yellow with the ultramarine blue. Um, and then as it goes further over the dark part of it, it becomes a darker blue green, which is above here. And then the window, the hole in the window, is more blue, which fits in nicely to these little three little colours here. Now there's a shadow going across the painting here, uh, um, and the shadow goes across these greens here. And there's two very different greens caused by the shade. Um, this green here looks very similar to the, uh, this kind of green you get with the yellow and the blue. But then there's another green over the other side, which I think uh, comes from a different combination, which is using the uh, emerald green with the bird sienna. It's a lovely mix, because I think you get this color here with the same mix. So see these browns here? These are using the emerald green and the burnt sienna start off with emerald green, you start getting these tiny bit of emerald green, you get this kind of emerald green here, well, so you can see the mix, I've got this emerald green which is the bright side of the side of the window frame and as I started adding burnt sienna it went to the, just below it to this colour, this kind of yellow green that's in the painting there. Keep on adding, you can see what's happening here, this is a movement I'm using emerald green across there, going across these ochres and the ochre browns you get in the seats and up at the top here and at the window here. And the ochre brown gets a bit darker and it goes darker. This is the line over here. And it moves over towards a richer uh, brown. It goes over. Now, in contrast to this, we have the other browns which are in the brick and in the bar. And there's a real difference. You get the yellow browns in the seats which belong to the emerald green. But when you add the emerald green to the, to the vermilion, you get these rich browns here, which I've got here. This is emerald green, again, with the vermilion, and it's giving you this really fantastic contrast. So in the seats, you get more of the kind of yellow ochre-looking uh, brown, which you, which you get by mixing the burnt sienna uh, of emerald green. And then you get that in contrast to these, the, 
the red of the bar as well. So it's really so Also, the, some of these browns and oak, as you see, are also placed into the head to get the balance of the painting and bits of red around it. So what it's doing is, is using colours around the painting, holding it together. Another example of that is the, is the orange door. The orange door here, you'll find it's actually in her hair and a little bit in his hair. Um, a little bit over here. So looking at old master paintings, you've got people like uh, Nicholas Poussin, who use colours the same way where the colours are. So it's, it's falling into a kind of classical way of understanding uh, colour balance in a painting. Um, so I'm just going to do a little bit of mixing. Um, First of all, I've got to get the yellow at the back, and that was just using a, a cabin yellow, a tiny bit of emerald green again, and I've got this very light colour here. Now, now, what's difficult is when you first start painting, is getting these subtle grey colours, how dark or light they are. So when you do a painting, you start in your own painting, best thing to do to start with, the, with oil paint, that is, not watercolour, but it's start with the very darkest and the very lightest colours, and then you'll be able to see how dark the mid-greys are uh, within the paint. Now, I've put um, a light grey down there. I think it's a bit too light. I think the grey might be a bit darker. But what I've done, I've, I've then uh, transferred the image on uh, using uh, charcoal underneath the print, like a carbon, like using carbon paper. And I've just ended up with the drawing here. And I put some white, more white down, acrylic white. So this all dried to work on. Um, and I'm just going to now put a bit of this colour. I can say I'm just going to do a bit of a bit of the painting. Um, this is using. The colour I'm using here is the cabin yellow, a bit of emerald green, and lots of white. I'm getting that lovely colour. Getting a really straight edge. I used a bit of masking tape, that edge, a bit like a painter and decorator. But, uh, that's a nice clean colour. Looks a little bit more yellow in area, so I'm just sticking a bit more yellow between the two canisters there. Uh, and I'm um, just putting in a bit of more white in that. And the, this, is, this, this is interesting as well. The white comes down and uh, of the yellow it comes down and it's so light, it almost touches. There's no, there's no difference between the white of the this and some um, and his top. And the, this is where it kind of a way of bringing in the the yellow into the foreground. So what happens, your eye travels round and goes in, so it kind of comes into this, it travels into the foreground here. There's a way in and it gets kind of movement in the painting. Similar, th similar thing happens um, with a dark colour at the back. I'll just show you that. I'm just going to pick out a dark colour. This is the dark ultramarine blue. A bit white with it. Bit of yellow coming into it as well. Not that much. Now the paint's on a, a, a bit thick. You get that nice contrast between this really dark colour here and the light colour. And it comes down <clears throat> just between the two people and breaks in to him. And this guy at the uh, uh, side over here, the background, we call it in, in, in classical painting, it's called a lost edge. The lost edge is where the, the, you don't really see an edge and it helps you travel into the van, it helps create movement there. And you, you do see an edge, it draws it in later, but it's really so little, so gentle. Um, it's a way leading your eye around the painting. So it, otherwise things can like this quite easily, if you're doing a kind of, a, it's kind of illustrative style like Hopper, you could end up with something looking like a cartoon and looks, or looks too real. So it's a way of avoiding that and creating movement. When you're going very tight painting like this, it's, you've got to find ways of creating whoever's looking at it to travel around, or, uh, to travel into the background, travel around here. Uh, Yeah. 
And also the top, we've got the same killers appearing. And that will really sandwich this light, make this look really bright. It's again, it's a contrast of values we've got here, where you get this really, I should be using more of a bit of tape there, but just showing you. This darker green, doing a bit more green up there, just adding a bit more yellow. So there's a movement between the uh, green and the. Now, just in contrast to this, you get the um, the the red and the bar. Uh, again, I've got the red here. You can just pick out, just bring out a little kind of like a flat color. Put the red in everywhere first. So we're kind of layering the paint, a kind of a. Using it, trying not to put paint too much over there, and then bringing in the dark colour. So I use a, I can use a darker colour, which I mixed, and packing out the little bit of the bar. So the redness of the bar now comes out by picking out the dark colour. And use a smaller brush there. Around the seats. And the brighter killer at the top of the bar. And then next to that, you got the the seats. Just coming up. And then also the red at the back. Uh, just bring the red in around the back. Use clean brush to get the uh, red brighter. This I get. This remember. This is just using emerald green and cab and vermilion. Going over him, he's uh, just take that out. Just he's coming down. This killer comes down again. I bring this killer down. Use my finger just to show what happens. He breaks into this foreground here. And he sits down. There's a little tiny ashtray or something bound, so you can see where he is actually there. Is he coming down across there? Just get that to my blue. Perhaps it's a little bit more blue, a bit more white with it, just a bit of white just so you can see them a bit more. See the blue a little bit more, it's a bit more blue so I can see the blue coming kind of across. Maybe just using a bit of white with that colour to so get the blue on the side of his jacket there. A bit more white, a bit cleaner white. And then I've got the uh, different brown uh, I can bring in for the seats, which is this brown over there. Which I've always met, remember, emerald green with burnt sienna. It's giving this different brown, and I'm just going to get a nice little brush just to bring in that colour. Now the seats look a bit. Uh, got a bit of 
bit of red on the brush, we're brushing this a lot, but... And um, just bring the actual writing is this, uh, over there as a similar colour. I'm just going to go over that. I can with this darker brown, and I can bring the darker brown over the top between the writing. So actually, way of writing, put writing in a painting. It's really is the best way of doing it is actually going for the negative shapes uh, around it. So it fits in. Excuse me, I'm not putting much writing in there. I'm just going to go for... This is the darker brown, which is a nice contrast between the dark brown and this, and the seats as well. So you get a lovely darkness between those two killers. Bring a bit darker, a bit more paint on. Let me get that contrast between that colour there. Um, I need some darker colours coming into this as well. I could actually just just rub this paint in a little bit just to get the colour coming through. So I think there is a bit, a bit we call it a bit of glazing that. You're taking the paint off and you get the colour coming through a little bit, getting a bit lighter, but perhaps using tissue, if using a dry brush would be a good way, a flat brush. If it's a good way, a good quality brush would be uh, better if you can just bring in this colour. Bring the colour in, bring the colour letting the colour underneath the light colour comes through the painting, whoops, make a mess there. Uh, and again over this side I can bring that darker colour, a bit more blue. Smaller brush for needed, I mean I'm obviously using a very big brush here to do this, but a small dry brush will stop all the brush marks and you can build up the colours uh, much more gent gently. But obviously I'm speeding up, I don't want to take too much time, but uh, a bit more blue. Now, um, so okay, again, some of these g greens, if you put a bit of white with them, you can get some of these greens at the top there, so we've put a bit of the white with this colour, you get this kind of green, which you find in these windows here. Also got the red um, on the back there. That really brings out the greens as well. Now this red, this brown comes up to that point there. Few fingers. Um, again, bringing the red. A nice contrast where the red is there. It hits that brown. The brown's a bit darker. Just bring a bit more paint on there to get the darkness of darkness of the brown. More green with it. And then you get um, <clears throat> the darker colour against that, against the red. The shadow of the. Oops, dirty brush now. Keep it nice and clean. Coming down towards the, the shadow, uh, this comes down to where it hits the shadow here. We'll include. The shadow is there, this is the shadow going across in the light area of the building. And then you hit the greens. This kind of colour there, I think it may have, a, it looks like it's had a dark brown underneath it, but I'm just going to mix that with the yellow ochre and the and Liz and, Liz and Crimson. Um, so I've got the Liz and Crimson, I've got the yellow ochre or my knife. Or I could use the yellow, cabin yellow. Now that's a bit too strong, so I'll try the yellow ochre. Yellow ochre and um, burnt sienna, just begin maybe a slightly orangey, more red. We're going, actually what I'm doing, I'm see the Liz and Crimson is here, 
the yellow, yellow ochre is there and mixing a warm red, but it's a darker version of it, using colours that are a bit further apart than those two. So I've got that colour, that looks good. And I can then bring in with a clean brush this red, getting a sense of light catching the brick. And then back to the greens, I was saying the green on this side looks to me like it's uh, part of the, these greens I've got at the back here. Um, these are kind of blue, blue greens coming in, much more, bit more ultramarine blue with it. And then again the shadow, the shadow comes down past the red, past, past that. Then I think we've got a different green. We've got this green here, which is a same colour combination of the the emerald green with the um, with the burnt sienna. And I've got that other green now. If I bring that in, very subtle change. It's lovely, lovely, lovely colour combination change there. Again, bringing that green down. And you won't really see the beauty of these greens until I've darkened the colours around it. Um, got the shadow coming down here. This brings me back to... Yeah, I've got different brushes of different colours, everyone. Um, so I'm not spending my time cleaning brushes. I've got the brown as well next to that. This brown in the window. Again, that was just using, again, the same combinations of colour I used for this colour. And I've got that coming down slightly more ochre okay, on the other side here. That's a little bit more burnt sienna, sorry, in there. Just a little bit more white with that. lighter that's a, it's a bit more light within that and then there's a shadow it's a kind of darker shadow going across that making that a bit darker and then you get the dark blues again really dark blues coming into this really dark color I mean I could go even darker I could what I'm going to do there to really dark colors there is mix myself uh, a Prussian blue rather than using black uh, Prussian blue with vermilion We'll get a really dark, dark blue, go even darker than what I've already got. So just mix these two, a bit of the blue, Prussian blue, it's very, 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 very dark colour. Really good, very nice black. That will work as my darker colour. Bring that in, and that should bring out all the other colours. And then there's a, there's a lovely bit of uh, swirling blue colour there. Remember, a lot of colours look really bright um, because they're up against some really dark colours. So the, the, the natural inclination is to pick the swirling blue or a, a colour. I'm just put white with it, but it'd be far too bright. So what I've done, I've gone, again, two colour mixing. I've gone to two colours either side. I've gone for the Prussian blue uh, over the uh, past the Prussian blue is a bit, not quite as green as that then mix the cadmium yellow with it. So um, <clears throat> what I've got is these lovely colours down, down this side. I mean, uh, I've got the, the green um, down here and I've got the these colours. I get these kind of beautiful uh, greeny colours off for the floor as well. So, so I've got the same combination for floor, the same for that. So as I just bring those colours in, I've got this uh, yeah, cabin yellow, Prussian blue, some patterns on the floor here, letting the grey come through using kind of dry brush, so I'm not destroying the colour underneath there, a bit more yellow, 
in certain areas. A bit more white with it. And it's got all these patterns in, in the painting. And the same combinations of colour to get the, <coughs> the, the window. I'm just using a bit more Prussian blue. Get that window colour in here. A little bit more blue with that. There's a bit of a darker colour to mix the blue with the yellow. Starts moving into a darker colour as it runs in. Then I can shift it into using this into the darker colour, just using the Prussian blue and the, and the green. Moving in. And it goes movement into that darker. There's a nice little bit of light colour, which I think is very similar to um, a cleaner brush. Similar colour to this colour I've got in the front here. So, so again, it's linking up the painting, so there's a bit of light there. Um, move over to the other colour, the this one. I've got, this kind of colour for the door, that was using um, Lism Crimson and Cadmium Yellow. You get that lovely orange and that goes into the door colour here. The grey underneath helps that, makes it look a bit cooler, so we're letting that come through. Also, you see a little bit of that colour on him and on her hair. Excuse me. It's a bit... So again, it's linking up the colour and you see that appearing in here as well, so it's kind of linking these colours up over each other. Um, <clears throat> now, just a bit, this strong colour now, the strong green. We need a super clean brush for that. And then this is just the emerald green, a tiny bit of the, tiny bit of the um, um, burnt sienna in it, the same combination. And then I bring in this line of beautiful green in there. It's Just remember, this is like a little colour study. I do this, I'm not worrying too much about the perfect, the getting it super neat. If I was going to do this, I'd use masking tape. And I think he's used some tape and a, and a bit more yellow coming down as it moves across to the back, looks a bit more yellow. And that appears a bit more yellow up there as well, the same colour. So it goes a bit, as it moves away, it goes a bit yellow. You get the colour distance there. Um, <clears throat> So it's, it's, it's coming together nicely. I'm mean, just picking out the um, some of the stronger greens. I can look at the this green up here. I've mixed with the yellow from the windows up there and the, and the shutters where the light catches up. And then the really darkness of the. I could go for the darkness with the dark blue. I mixed there for get the darkness in the window. And that should bring out all the colours in there. Whoops, gone over that too much. Excuse me. That's linking up the two in there. <clears throat> Dark colour over there as well within the painting. And then here, just take away these colours. Let's get the darkness in there. And uh, also these darker colours coming in through here. Bring out these blues, more ultramarine blue. And I've got this very light, uh, dark colour coming down there as well. Well, then that, that's very important. Again, that brings your eye right down the painting there, through into that area. Got some greys over here. Can um, mix the burnt sienna of ultramarine blue to get the greys. Um, just uh, see, but to finish off, what I'm going to do, just going to try and paint um, the the woman, give a bit of colour to her, because um, the red's important. Also, this guy here has got this kind of sienna colour on him. I won't bother with these. Uh, this colour around the back, I think that belongs to the same combination. You've got this colour, this kind of got grey-yellow. It's a grey-yellow, uh, kind of dark yellow ochre. So to mix it, I've used burnt sienna on one side and emerald green again. So that's, that fits in, so that's, I can bring that colour down. So many, there's so many colours in this painting. I'm just, uh, I've used loads of brushes here. I'm having to kind of, I'm running out of brushes and use. And, uh, but I've got my uh, 
emerald green with the white for the for this. A bit yellow with it. And just bring that down. Lovely killer. Ooh, it's beautiful. Just running down. And again, as it comes a bit cleaner up here. And then looking for <clears throat> next to that, you've got this other green that I was talking about. That mixing the same combinations of colour, it goes a bit more different colour. And now I'm looking for the red. I've done a bit of mixing with the red. I'll just this is alizarin crimson, and I use a bit of I use a little bit of emerald green to make it a little bit darker. So I'll just bring in the, the stronger red on her, the lighter colour on her dress. Now this should make a big difference to the uh, painting when you bring these colours in. Um, just a little bit stronger reds appearing in there. And she's got some light catching her, a bit of white as well. And the colours around her, you've got the blue coming around the back. That'll help bring her colour out. And <clears throat> the colour at the back on the wall comes against her as well, helps bring her colours out, so that kind of... This looks like it's the reflection in the window of that, because um, the shadow, you see that two rectangular shadow? I can bring that colour into the shadow there, then it's just a little bit darker. Excuse me, just picking a bit of colour off there. And um, just a little bit of colour on him, um, I think he's got some of these blues over on him to link that, this bit up with this figure. So I'm just bringing a, a few blues there around the back of him. He's also got some reds on him. Um, again, linking up some kind of reddy colors when he's in his face and neck. Quite a little bit, a bit stronger. And then his eye and mouth and the nose. A deeper blue against his tie. Brings him forward and just bits of uh, lighter yellow around the back of him. Um, a clean brush there, <laughs> running out of clean brushes. But uh, again, bring this colour down around the back and get that silhouette effect where the. is against him and a bit of light catching the top of him, his hat. <clears throat> And um, obviously you can see it's going to get very fiddly. Um, I'm going to use a bit more blue. I've got the blue, the Prussian blue over here and for his top, a bit of, uh, rub that in so it gets a bit more Prussian blue, a tiny bit of yellow in there. Looks quite neat Prussian blue, almost like neat Prussian blue. And um, so he's quite strong. And then there's a darker color against him. I can use the black I mixed earlier. Just take that down. His ties in there, and then there's a darker brown. Now the brown I, I'm using is a colour that's actually in the seat, so actually around the back of his head, that makes a difference. And the side of his, around the back of, or just underneath his hat is a dark brown, so I'm just gonna bring that in. That makes a big difference. And then bring the dark blue for his jacket. And they're starting to come a little bit. Um, just working with his hat, get his hat work, working. Uh, the brown, <clears throat> the grey at the back on the on the floor disappear. Got bits of light catching in. The lightness I'm going to use for uh, for his face is just using yellow ochre with white and burnt sienna with white for these really light colours there. So if I just uh, run that on. Get a bit of light in there, and on her as well, her head. And, and his face has got a bit more redness in that, so a bit more sienna in there for his face. And he's got more light. This guy here has a bit more light on top of his head. And uh, picking out little bits. Some darker bits on her eyes. They look a little bit like they could be these browns. I'm not quite sure. But just bring little dubs of light in there. The brown on her hair is sienna. And then <clears throat> just picking up a bit more of the red. Get a 
if I can draw it. Anyway, um, well, I, I, as you can see, the, the, I'm, I'm quite pleased with the um, colours I've got there. They've got a nice uh, contrast of light and shade. And I think there's, there's a lot in the quality of these colours I've got there. And I've showed you the two colour mixing, which um, I'm going to try and finish this painting and make it a bit more complete. And I'll show you that in the next video. So um, I hope you enjoyed that. Enjoy the rest of the videos and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye.